This is Rich with J.R. Propo, and this is the 13th in a series of videos regarding how to set up a new helicopter model in the JR T44 transmitter using the JR Tags Mini 3 axis flybarless gyro system. In the last video, we performed a limiter adjustment, which limits how far the Tags Mini will allow the swashplate to move for cyclic and also sets the endpoints for the tail rotor servo. In this video, We'll set up the collective pitch travel using the swash mix menu in the T44 and set the pirouette compensation direction in the TAGS Mini using the G-Tune application. We're going to start by turning on our T44. And from the home screen, we're going to press the L button to take us into the function list menu. Once in the function list menu, we're going to scroll to the right to the swash mix menu, highlight the word swash mix and click the roller. Back to our tags mini, we're going to power up the onboard electronics again, still using a separate nickel metal hydride battery for safety reasons. The motor in the helicopter is still disabled at this point. I'm going to wait for the tags mini to boot up, not disturbing the helicopter or the transmitter sticks. Once it's booted up, we're going to press the S button and hold it until the lamps begin to circulate. Our gain lamp is once again lit and we're in the function menu of the TAGS Mini. The gyros are effectively disabled. Once again, we have our helicopter on a level surface facing toward us with the blades parallel to the boom. We're going to install a pitch gauge so we can measure the collective pitch. Now once again, I'm using an old-fashioned pitch gauge to make it easier to see in the video. You should always use a modern digital pitch gauge during your setup. Now the helicopter that I'm setting up is a 550 size helicopter and for starting purposes I want plus and minus 11 degrees of collective pitch. In the field I may want to increase that a little bit, but for starting out that's where I want it to be. I've got the pitch gauge installed and I have it set for 11 degrees of positive pitch. I'm going to increase the collective pitch stick on the transmitter until it's all the way up. And if you look at the top of the pitch gauge, it's not quite level. So at this point, we have a little bit more than the 11 degrees of collective pitch we've been looking for. Back to my T44. I'm going to scroll down to the pitch setting, which is the positive 50% that we were using when we did the calibration. I'm going to highlight the positive 50, click it, and I'm going to start scrolling down. This will reduce the overall collective pitch range and reduce it evenly in both positive and negative directions. As I scroll the percentage down, I'm going to watch the top of the pitch gauge. You'll notice that it's moving towards level. Once I get it level, I'm going to stop scrolling. I've now reset the pitch gauge to measure negative pitch and I'm going to pull the throttle collective stick all the way down. Now the top of the pitch gauge is still level and every time I've set up a TAGS Mini, if I've leveled the servo arms properly, if I set the swash plate to zero properly, I perform the calibration properly and I have, when the swash plate is level and halfway through its travel, I have the blade set at zero properly. I've gotten exactly the same range of collective pitch, positive and negative. If you don't have this, go back, check to make sure your arms are level, check to make sure your swash plate is level when the arms are level and halfway through its travel, and redo the calibration. The collective pitch is now set in the T44 transmitter. Before we set the pirouette compensation direction, we're going to power down our TAGS Mini, and we're going to reboot it. Now it looks like the CAL lamp was lit steadily permanently there. It isn't in reality, but it's a reflection from the overhead lights, I apologize. With our TAGS Mini rebooted and our transmitter on, we're ready to start the pirouette compensation direction setting. Our computer is booted up and the dongle 
where the GTune application is installed in the computer. Next, we're going to connect the other end of the dongle into the Powered Up Tags Mini. With that connected, we're going to scroll to the upper right to the Connect button and press it. The red lamp has turned to green, and we're now in communication with the Tags Mini. We're going to go into the Center tab Options setting, and we're going to go into Pirouette Compensation. This helps immensely during stationary and traveling pirouettes in terms of keeping the helicopter level. We're going to press Enable, and then we're going to press Confirm. Now when we press Confirm, you'll see the swashplate will tip aft. Once it does this, we have a few short seconds to turn the helicopter and observe the pirouette compensation direction. I'm going to press the confirm button again. The right hand side of the swash plate is down. I'm going to rotate the helicopter. You can see the right hand side of the swash plate is now tipped up. This tells us that our pirouette compensation is backwards. Back to our computer. I'm going to scroll to the right here where it says reverse direction and click the mouse. Then I'm going to press the right button on the upper right side of the screen. I get a right parameters to tags. I'm going to press yes. And then I get a right complete. Now I'm going to check the direction again. I'm going to hit the confirm button. Now I'm going to rotate the helicopter again. As you look at the screen, you see the right side of the swash plate, as seen in the screen, is always pointed down. Pirouette compensation is now complete. Now, if you don't hit the right button after changing the direction, the compensation direction will not change, so always remember to do that. A couple of other points of interest on this screen. Dead band. I usually set this to nil. I want to take advantage of the precision in the JR servos and the JR radios, so I really don't want any dead band. The only time I think I would use this is if I had a dirty potentiometer in the transmitter that caused drift, and if something like that should happen, I would suggest having it serviced rather than adjusting the dead band. E-ring down at the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and enable this. Um, this is nice because it prevents a combination of cyclic and collective inputs from causing binding in the servos and the swash plates. So I'm going to enable that. And of course, to save those changes, as always, I'm going to press my right button. I get the window saying right parameters to tags, yes, and OK. In the next video, we're going to talk about the physical mounting of the tags mini on the helicopter, types of tape, retention of connectors, etc., wire routing into the tags mini receiver antenna locations, and then discuss some final checks before test flying. Thank you.